السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so many favors and bounties and one of the greatest blessings of Allah dhul jalal ikram is the life of this dunya that Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram has granted us. All the bounties and the favors of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram that we enjoy, they are all due to the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us the life. And the life that Allah has granted us, it is very short. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life for very limited time of period and it is very short and we do not know when we are going to leave this dunya. That is why we have to always be ready for departing this dunya and leaving this dunya. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to advise Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma he used to say Udda nafsaka min ahli al-qubur Iza asbahta fala tantadir al-masa wa iza amsayta fala tantadir al-sabah If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to witness a morning in your life never wait for next evening and if Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram has allowed you to witness an evening, then never wait for next morning. Rather consider and count yourself always from amongst the people of the graves. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us a beautiful dua to be read when we visit the cemetery and graveyard. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised us to say, Whenever we enter into cemetery, to say "Assalamu alaykum, ya ahl al-diyar," peace be upon you, O the people of these houses. And the word in the hadith is "ad-diyar," which is the plural of "dar," which means house. So when you enter into cemetery and graveyard, you say "peace be upon you, O the people of these houses." And the reality is that that hole inside the earth that is our final and permanent house the house we live in in this dunya no matter how much you spend on that house it is five six seven eight ten bedrooms house or even a villa or bungalow whatever you live in in this dunya by allah it is not yours it is not your house Rather, your house is that hole inside the earth, in the ground. When you are going to be buried under the dust and the mud, that hole is your final and permanent abode and the residence. And all of us, we should be working towards the construction and the building of that house. Sayyiduna Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu One of the most beloved companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Someone who was given the glad tidings of paradise by the tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on many occasions To the extent that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly said that Uthman is in paradise Allah has written paradise for Uthman at one occasion, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu donated a large amount of his wealth in the way of Allah dhul jalal ikram 
that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got very excited and he said, ma darra Uthman ma amila ba'd al yawm Nothing is going to harm Uthman regardless of the acts and the deeds that Uthman does. He does after this day. Nothing is going to prevent him from entering into paradise. <clears throat> this Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his companion with the name of Hani, he says, I used to see and observe Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu whenever he would stand by a grave, he would cry a lot. He would start weeping to the level that his beard would become completely wet because of his tears. And he says, one day I approached Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who said, Tudkarul jannatu wa tudkarul nar falam tabk. Uthman, I have seen you that the paradise is mentioned in your presence and the hellfire is also mentioned in your presence. But I never saw you crying when you hear about paradise. When you hear even the punishment of Allah Jalal Ikram for the criminals and the sinners inside the hellfire, you never cry. But whenever the grave is mentioned, you start weeping and crying. Why is this? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who said, this is due to the fact that I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, inna al-qabra awwalu manazil al-akhirah. Verily, the grave is the very first stage of the next life. فَمَنْ نَجَا مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ Whoever passes this very first stage successfully, the following stages are very easy for him. The stage of reckoning on the day of judgment. The stage of passing over the bridge that is on top of the hellfire. And to be and, and to be held to be account to an account before Allah Jalal Ikram on the day of judgment. And the event and the stage of weighing the deeds, the good and bad deeds. The stage of being questioned before Allah Jalal Ikram. All these stages would become very easy for the person who passes the very first stage, which is the stage of the grave. And whoever fails in the very first stage, the stage of the grave, the following stages are going to be even harder and more difficult and severe for him. And then he also says that I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, مَا رَأَيْتُ مَنْظَرًا قَطُّ إِلَّا وَالْقَبْرُ أَفْضَعُ مِنْ I never saw any scene that is more terrifying and frightening than the scene of the grave. Allah Jalal Ikram showed our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam various scenes of various types of punishment that people suffer from in the hellfire. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the adulterer being punished in the hellfire. He وسلم, also saw the punishment of the liar. The punishment of someone who consumes and deals with interest. He وسلم, has seen the punishment of those who backbite. And he وسلم, saw the punishment of someone who abandons the salah. He وسلم, has seen the punishment of all these criminals and the sinners. He وسلم, says, ما رأيت قطو إلا والقبر I never saw any scene that is more frightening and terrifying than the scene of the grave itself. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, القبر إما روضة من رياض الجنة this hole inside the earth, in the ground, the grave, is either a garden from the gardens of paradise or 
the very same hole can be a hole of fire for some individuals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the punishment of the grave. What takes place inside the grave? This is something that Allah dhul jalal ikram through his revelation and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of his mercy for his ummah they have informed us. They have told us about the life in the grave and the purpose and the reason of this information is so that we can take heed and then we can rectify our errors and our problems and we can work towards building that house and to try our best to make our final house which is grave as a garden of paradise. This is the whole purpose and we do not know what takes place inside the grave apart from what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us of. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us about the life in the grave, it should be part of our iman. We must believe in it. Regardless of the reason or the excuse, whether it makes sense or doesn't make sense. Because our belief is based on the information that we receive from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says nothing about the religion particularly except when he receives the revelation from Allah dhul jalal ibn ikram. So whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about the life inside the grave, it is true and it is something that does take place. But the only difference is that we do not know what takes place inside the grave of any individual. Those who have passed away from amongst our relatives, our parents, our siblings, our friends, our family members, people around us, those who have passed away they, and they are buried in their graves, we do not know what they are going through. We do not know whether their graves are the gardens of paradise or their graves are the holes of the fire. All we can do for them is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah dhul jalal ikram protects them from the punishment of the grave. And at the same time, we need to try our best to work towards the building of that grave so that the grave, our graves become the gardens of paradise for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us in details about the life in the grave. And there are many ahadiths, many narrations of the companions Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een with regards to this matter. And one of them is the very famous hadith that is reported by Ibara bin Azib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. A companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says that one day we went out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the burial of one of his companions who belonged to the Ansar. And while we were, in, we were there with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cemetery in Baqi, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was waiting for the grave to be ready for the burial of the deceased. He says, we sat with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we sat around him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced the qibla. When he faced the qibla, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then took the opportunity to advise us and to tell us about the life inside the grave. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his head three times towards the heavens and then he lowered his head three times. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said three times, Ista'idu billahi min adab al qabr. O my companions, seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Ask Allah that Allah protects you from the punishment of the grave. Three times he repeated. 
And then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said three times, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adab al qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave. Oh Allah, protect me from the punishment of the grave. Oh Allah, save me from the punishment of the grave. He said three times. Then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, When a believer is about to leave this dunya and he is taking his final breaths, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down a group of angels. And these angels, they have white faces. And their faces are glowing as sun. They come down and then they stay away from this believer as far as he can see. And then the head and the chief of this group of angels, which is the angel of death, Malakul Maut, he comes forward. And he stands by the head of the believer. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that these angels, they bring with them the shrouds and the coffin and the sheets from paradise. And they also bring the fragrance from paradise. And this angel of death, when he approaches the believer, he directly addresses the soul of the believer and he says, Ayyatuhan nafsul mutma inna tutayyiba, ukhruji ila maghfiratim min Allahi wa ridwan, fa inna rabbaki alayki rad. He says, O oh, tranquil and peaceful and pure soul, leave this body. This is the time to leave this body. And let's go towards the forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah. Indeed, your Lord is pleased with you. Let's imagine, my dear brother and sister in Islam, when you hear this glad tiding, when you hear this glad tiding from the angel of death, and you know 100% that, that, that you are no longer going to live in this dunya, and this is the final time and this is the time when you have to make your move towards the next life and at the beginning of that life and at the end of this life you are given this glad tiding that your Lord is pleased with you Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says as soon as the believer hears this glad tiding his soul comes out of his body Easily, smoothly, without any pain. The soul of the believer leaves the body easily without any pain as you were to pour a drop of water from the container of the water. And how long does it take for a drop of the water to be poured from the container? Nothing, less than a second. This is how the soul of the believer comes out of his body. And when the soul comes out of the body, the angel of death receives the soul. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salla alayhi kullu malakin bayna samai wal ardi wa kullu malakin fi sama. Every single angel of Allah in the heavens and every single angel of Allah between the heavens and the earth starts making dua for this blessed and tranquil and peaceful soul. And the angels start begging Allah, O oh Allah, allow us to see and witness this blessed soul. Look at the honor and the dignity and the respect that Allah has given you a believer. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the rest of the angels who have stayed far away from the believer, they rush towards the angel of death and they do not leave the soul of the believer in the hands of the angel of death. Rather, they quickly grab the soul of the believer and they wrap it in the shroudings of the paradise. And then they ascend towards the heavens. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they, these angels, they go up towards the heavens and they knock the gates and the doors of first heaven. And the guard angels of the first heaven, before opening the doors and the gates of the heavens, they ask about this particular individual and this soul. 
and they ask who is this soul whose this soul is the angels reply yadkurunahu bi ahsani asma'i allati kana yu'rafu biha fi dunya he sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that the angels who have taken the soul of the believer towards the heavens they make the mention of the best of the names and the titles and the characteristics of this believer by which he was known in this dunya. The person who was known within the community, within the society, amongst his family, amongst his relatives, amongst his friends, that this was the person of kind heart. This was the, per this was the person of generosity. This was the person who used to love the house of Allah. This was someone who was so connected and attached to the house of Allah. The person who never missed a salah. The person who used to fast so many fasts, even voluntary fasts. The person who used to read the book of Allah day and night. They make the mention of all the characteristics and the good qualities that this person was known with in this dunya. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the angels open the doors of the first heaven and they welcome the soul of the believer with all the respect and the honor and dignity. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, from this first heaven, obviously in every single heaven there are angels of Allah. We do not know the number of those angels. But amongst those angels, some of them are very close to Allah Jalal Ikram. And he sallallahu alayhi wa said, the closest angels to Allah Jalal Ikram, they accompany this soul and then they take from the first heaven and they ascend to the second heaven. And the same incident takes place, the same event takes place in the second heaven. And then from there to third, and then fourth, then fifth, then sixth, then seventh. When the soul of the believer reaches to the seventh heaven, Allah Jalal Ikram instructs the angels, and Uktubu Kitab Abdi fi Illiyin. Write the name of my slave in the book of Illiyin. Kalla inna Kitab al Abrari la fi Illiyin. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا عِلِّجُونَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Allah says in Surah Al-Mutaffifin Juz Amma Verily the names of the pious and righteous are written in عِلِّيِّين وعِلِّيُّون What makes you know about عِلِّيُّون What is عِلِّيُّون وعِلِّيِّين كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ This is a register, a book that is with Allah, Yashhaduhu al muqarrabun The closest angels of Allah, to Allah, Dhul Jalal Ikram, they keep this book with them. And in that book, they are the names of all the pious and righteous people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the angels that note down and record the name of my slave in that book. And the angels, they write the name of this individual in that book. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the angels to return the soul of the believer into his body. And by then, the believer is buried inside his grave. Now, the life inside the grave begins. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the believer is buried in the grave, two angels appear inside his grave. And these angels are not very good looking rather they are very harsh and aggressive and rude and then they sit him up and they ask him some questions and these are the questions my dear brothers and sisters in Islam that we all have heard many times but the question towards these question is what have we done in order to prepare the answers to these questions. The first question the believer is asked, Marrabbuk, who is your Lord? The believer immediately, someone who worshipped Allah alone, someone who never bowed down before, before any before other than Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, and he always worshipped Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram alone. 
someone who always made sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he never committed any shirk. Someone who used to make dua to Allah dhul jalal ikram and he never called upon other than Allah. Someone who died on the aqeedah and the belief of the tawheed. He will be able to say, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Someone who was obedient to Allah dhul jalal ikram, he will say immediately, my Lord is Allah. Then the angel asked him the second question, Ma dinuk, what is your religion? And the believer says immediately, Deeni al-Islam, my religion is Islam. And bear in mind, my dear brother and sister in Islam, Wallahi, Billahi, by Allah, you will be able to answer this question that my religion is Islam only if you felt proud to be Muslim in this dunya. If you feel embarrassed to be called a Muslim or to be known as a Muslim amongst your work colleagues, within your community, and you try your best to have your appearance and your lifestyle like a non-Muslim, so people around you, your neighbors, and people who work with you, so they cannot figure out whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim. If this is how you live the life with this dunya, wallahi, you will never ever be able to say in the grave that my religion is Islam. Because you never appreciated the blessing of Islam. You never appreciated the blessing and the ni'mah of Islam. But if you lived your life according to Islam, you will say immediately, Deen al-Islam. My religion is Islam. And then the angels ask the third question. مَا تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلَ الَّذِي بُعِثَ فِيكُمْ What do you say about this individual, this man, who was sent amongst you as a prophet and messenger of Allah, referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the believer says, هُوَ نَبِيِّ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He was my prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, someone who I loved more than I loved my own soul. He was, he was closer to my soul, to myself, than my own parents, my own family members, my own children, my siblings, my friends, my business, my wealth, and anything and everything that I had in, in this dunya. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was closer than anything and everything towards me. He is my prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, you'll be able to reply with this answer only if you loved Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you proved your love for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through your actions by following his footsteps, by following his sunnah. Not only and simply saying, I'm the ashiq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I love him. And when it comes to prove your love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your lifestyle, your appearance, your clothing, your, the environment within your house, your dealing with others, your characteristics, your akhlaq, your manners, nothing reflects the sunnah and the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after these three questions, the believer is asked the first, and he, uh, he, the believer is asked the fourth question as well. And the fourth question is very, very important. The fourth question is, Ma amaluk? And this authentic hadith. Usually we hear that we are going to be questioned only three. But this hadith, authentic hadith, says the believer will be asked the fourth question as well. And the fourth question will be, Ma amaluk? The angels are going to ask you, What were your deeds? What have you done in the dunya? Tell us about your deeds, the good deeds that you have been doing in the dunya. And obviously, the believer, someone who was regular in his five daily prayers, someone who used to fast in Ramadan and other than Ramadan, someone who used to perform Umrah and Hajj regularly someone who used to give a lot in charity someone who was a person of good akhlaq and good manner and characteristics all of these deeds out of all these good deeds the believer will make the mention of only one good deed only one and before i make the mention of that deed my dear brothers and sister islam i would like you and i, I would request you to pay full attention to this and ask yourself whether you have this, de this deed 
in your record or not if not then now today you have the chance to ask Allah for his forgiveness whatever you have done in the past forget it ask Allah to forgive you and make promise to Allah that you are going to work towards this good deed that is going to be your reply to the question inside the grave the believer will say qara'tu kitab Allah wa amantu bihi wa saddaqt i used to read the book of allah i believed in the book of allah and i believe that the book of allah is a true book and the final revelation from allah dhul jalal ikram i ask myself you ask yourself being in mind that in the grave we'll have no father no mother no brother no sister with us no friend with us every single individual of us will be alone and the situation is very terrifying and frightening alone in the darkness of the grave and the and 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 we are questioned and we are going to be questioned by these two angels who are very rude and aggressive they are not kind and gentle in that difficult situation you will have to reply to this question what were your deeds and you have to answer also be in mind by allah you will now you will never be able to lie in the grave here if your father your mother your parents someone asks you whether you read the quran on daily basis you might lie here you can lie here you say yes i do but in reality you do not read the book of allah on daily basis but in the grave if you never book if, if you never read the book of allah here and if you did not have strong link and the connection and strong love for the book of allah by allah you will never be able to reply in the grave you will never be able to say that i used to read the book of allah also bear in mind that in this dunya if you have the excuses that because i never read how to read the quran so now i have grown up i have reached my age at 30 40 50 60 70 now i am unable to even learn or to even make any efforts to learn how to read the book of allah here you can spend whole life making this excuse and making yourself foolish and not taking any heed and not making any effort and not trying to even learn how to read the quran then ask yourself would you be able to say in the grave that i used to read the book of allah you spent whole life having these excuses you do not know and you think this excuse is enough for you and you tend to forget that allah revealed this book for your guidance you learned everything about the dunya you learned how to play with the mobile you knew how to operate your laptop and your computer and you knew everything about the games that you play on the computers and you knew everything about the sports you knew everything about the football you knew everything about your business you knew everything about how to claim the benefits and how to cheat you knew everything about the dunya but when it comes to the quran you satisfy yourself with the lame excuse that you are unable to read the quran and then you spend whole life this way ask yourself what is going to be your answer inside the grave when the angels are going to ask you ma amaluk but on contrary if you had strong love for the book of allah the book of allah reading and reciting the quran was part of your daily life and it must be part of your daily routine ask yourself my dear brother and sister in islam how many minutes you spend every day in reading the quran out of 24 hours do you spend 24 minutes and i'm sure every single one of us 
we check our mobile phone and we check our WhatsApp more than 24 times every single day. But when it comes to the book of Allah, we do not even have the ability to read only 24 lines. What kind of Muslim are we? Allah revealed this book for our guidance. A non-Muslim picks up a non-Muslim picks up a copy of the Quran. Someone who does not believe in the Quran. Someone who is unable to read the Arabic text of the Quran. He goes through the simple translation of the Quran in English. But he has sincerity, ikhlas, and he wants to get the guidance from this very book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of guidance for a non-Muslim and he embraces Islam. You, someone who is born within a Muslim household, within the Muslim family, your parents are Muslim, your environment is Muslim, you, 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 you call yourself Muslim and you think that you cannot read Quran and Quran is not for you. Quran is for the Imam, for the Maulana, for the Khatib who stands on the member and delivers the khutbah and you think it is sufficient for you to come and attend the masjid and to hear the lecture, that's it. You do not have any responsibility towards the book of Allah. If this is your attitude towards the book of Allah, then ask yourself, ask yourself, how are you going to reply to the question inside the grave? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the believer once he has answered all these four questions these angels ask him these three first three questions second time very aggressively and the believer stays firm in answering the questions and upon this Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the verse that Allah revealed in Surah Ibrahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the believers firm and steadfast on the most firm statement in this dunya and in the hereafter the most firm statement is the statement of what la ilaha illallah those who are firm on this statement, this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enable them to stay firm in the questioning of the grave. That is why despite the severity of the situation and very frightening situation, the believer stays firm and he answers these questions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when the believer has answered these questions correctly, Allah Jalalikram instructs the angels and Sadaqa Abdi Afrishuhu min al Jannah wa albisuhu min al Jannah wa ftahulahu baban in al Jannah. My servant, my slave, has told truth and he has answered all the questions correctly. Now provide him the bedding from paradise, provide him the clothing from paradise, and open a door for him from his grave towards paradise so that he can feel the bliss and the, and the air from paradise. So he can enjoy the paradise inside his grave. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the grave can be a garden from the gardens of paradise. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa says after a short while, after these two angels they have left, a person appears inside the grave of the believer. The person with very beautiful face. And this person when he, when he appears inside the grave of the believer. He says to the believer I'm here to give you the glad tiding. I'm here to give you a good news. The believer says I could figure out by looking at your face. That this is the face that can bring only good news. Who are you? Tell me about yourself. And this person says, Ana amaluka salih. I'm your good deeds. I'm your good deeds. I'm your salah. I'm your fasting. I'm your reading of the Quran. I'm your remembrance of Allah. I'm your good deeds. Upon this, the believer gets so excited. And he says, 
Let me go back to my family so that I can give them this glad tiding that I have passed this stage successfully. Subhanallah. But the angels say, no. Once you have come into this life, there is no return. There's no going back. You have to stay here. Relax and sleep as the newly married bride sleeps. Peacefully, without any problem and without any pain. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believer stays in his grave and it will continue enjoying the blessings of Allah Ikram. And while he is receiving all these blessings from and the bliss of paradise inside his grave. This is one side of the story. This is one scenario. This is the life of the believer. This is the life of the obedient servant of Allah in the grave. But on the other side, on the other hand, the other side of the story is very bitter and frightening and scary. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a disbeliever and the sinner, disbeliever and the sinner believer, when they are about to leave this dunya and they are taking the final breaths in this life, Allah Ikram sends down the angels the same way he sends the angels to take away the soul of the believer. The angels come down and they bring with them the dirty clothes from the hellfire. And their faces are very ugly, ugly faces. And these group of angels, this group of angels, they stay away from the disbeliever, from the sinner, from the wicked, from the hypocrite, as far as he can see. Then the angel of death comes forward and he says to the soul of the disbeliever and the sinner and the disobedient servant of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, he says, Ayyatuhan nafsul khabitha, ukhruji ila sakhatim min Allahi wa ghadab, fa inna rabbaki alayki ghadban. O oh, filthy and bad soul, come out of this body. Let's go towards the wrath and the anger of Allah. Indeed, your Lord is very angry at you. Just imagine, if you hear this statement from the angel of death, what would be your situation? How would you react? What would you feel? How would you feel at that moment? When you know for sure that no one can help you, the doctors cannot save your life anymore. Your family members cannot help you at all. Your own father, your own mother, your own children, the closest friends, they are standing by you. And you are given and you have heard. None of them have heard this statement. It's only yourself that the angel of death has given you this bad news that your Lord is angry at you. Na'udhu billahi min dalik. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that at that point, the soul of the sinner and the disbeliever scatters inside his body and the soul does not want to come out because the soul has heard this bad news and is scary. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when the soul of the disbeliever and the sinner does not want to leave the body, the angels of death moves forward and he pulls out the soul of the disbeliever forcefully he sallallahu alayhi wa said, as you were to insert a skewer, a skewer inside, the skewer that has pointing ends. And you insert the skewer inside the wet wool and then you then pull it out. The same way the angel of death pulls out the soul of the disbeliever and the sinner from the body. To the level that he sallallahu alayhi wa said, that all the, all the muscles and the bones of this individual is, are, are all completely broken. I mentioned this hadith some way where amongst the audience there was a person who used to work in a nursing home. And he said after the lecture, he said, it is true, I have seen this with my own eyes. I have seen people 
who were unable to move anything from their body. People who were unable to move even one single finger. They were completely paralyzed. But when the angel of death approached them, I saw them jumping on their beds. And I was shocked that this is the very same individual who was unable to move any part of his body. But now he's jumping up and down the bed. And this is, how what this is what happens to the disbeliever and this is what happens to the sinner. Na'udhu billahi min thalik. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when the angel of death has pulled out the soul of the disbeliever from his body, the rest of the angels rush towards him. And by the time the angels approach the angel of death, Every single angel of Allah between the heavens and the earth and every single angel of Allah in the heaven start cursing this filthy and bad soul. And every single angel of Allah in the heavens start making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, we request you, do not allow this filthy soul come closer to us. We do not want to see it. Then he وسلم, said, the angels, the group of angels, they grab the soul of the disbeliever and the sinner from the hands of the angel of death and then they wrap it into the dirty clothes that they have brought from the hellfire. And then they ascend towards the heavens. And when they approach the first heaven and they ask the permission and they ask the guard angels of the first heaven to open the doors of the first heaven, they asked these angels about this soul and they say who is this individual these angels make all oh, make mention of all the bad titles and the characteristics that this person was known with in the dunya someone who never prayed someone who used to commit zina, someone who used to steal, someone who was, who was known within the community, within the society as a liar, someone who used to know all the tricks how to cheat and how to lie, someone who's, who was known as a person who earns haram, someone who runs a haram business, the person who is known with all these bad characteristics, the angels make the mention of all these bad characteristics. And when the God angel of the first heaven, they hear all these bad qualities of this filthy soul, they, they refuse, they refuse to open the doors of the first heaven. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the angels to write down his name in Sijin. كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْفُجَّارِ لَفِي سِجِّينَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سِجِّينَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ The names of the wicked and the sinners are written in Sijin. And Sijin is the name of another book in which the name of the sinners are recorded. Allah says to the angels, write down his name in that book. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the angels to return and throw his soul from the first heaven all the way inside his grave. And by then he is buried in the grave. And now he has to face bigger problem. Severe situation. Frightening and terrifying situation. Two angels appear inside his grave. They sit him up and they ask him the question, Who is your Lord? This was someone who used to hear Adhan, someone who knew that Allah has legislated five daily prayers on him, but he never paid attention. And he thought that there's no benefit, there's no point in establishing five daily prayers. And he neglected the prayers. Someone who never worshipped Allah, 
the angels ask him this question who is your lord he says ha ha la adri wo to me i do not know they ask him the second question ma dinu who is what is your religion he says i do not know i never practice islam i never practice islam i do not know my religion they ask him the third question ma taqulu fi hadha ar rajul alladhi bu'itha fikum what do you say about that man who was sent amongst you as a prophet and messenger he says i do not know anything about him about apart from what i heard people saying and in the dunya there were people who used to love him really there were people who used to love him more than their own souls and on the other side there were people who used to hate him na'udhu billahi min dhalik i heard people saying all sorts of stuff and statements about him so i said whatever people said and i believed whatever people believed then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says at that point allah dhul jalal ikram instructs the angels afrishu lahu min an nar wa iftahu lahu baban ila an nar provide him the beddings of the fire fill his grave with the fire and then on top of this open a door for him towards the hell fire fa yatihi min harriha wa sumumiha so that he can feel the scorching heat and he suffers from the scorching heat of the hell fire inside his grave and this is the type of grave about which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hufratun min hufar an nar a grave can be a hole of fire then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam says yuqayyadu alayhi yadhhar alayhi rajulun qabih al wajh then a person after these angels two angels who asked the question they have left a person appears inside his grave with ugly face and as soon as, soon as he appears he says i'm here to give you very bad news and this person he knows his 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 outcome he knows his result already but on top of this this person appears in his in his grave and he says i'm here to give you bad news and this disbeliever and the sinner looks at his face and he says i knew i can figure out that you are the person of this ugly face and you can bring only bad news who are you and he says ana amaluka sayy i'm your evil acts i'm your bad deeds i'm your backbiting i'm your lying i'm your committing zina i'm your stealing i'm your bad deeds i'm here to give you bad news then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says thumma yuqayyadu alayhi a'ma abkam wa sam fi yadihi mirzabatun min hadid he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints an angel on this disbeliever and sinner inside his grave the angel who is blind he cannot see and he is deaf he cannot hear he cannot speak anything and allah points this angel on him for what fi yadihi mirzabatun min hadith this angel is holding a very heavy and big hammer in his hands and he starts striking him with hammer and crushing his head with hammer he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said very first time when the angel when the angel this angel strikes this disbeliever and the sinner inside his grave yasma'uhu kullu al-khala'iq illa thaqalain every single creation of allah hears the screaming of this sinner inside his grave they all hear the screaming of this individual inside his grave apart from two burdens on this earth who are the two burdens the human beings the mankind and the jinn we are the burdens on this earth we are the burdens on this earth why because we enjoy the blessings of allah but when it comes to pleasing allah and worshiping allah we neglect as for other than us every single creation of allah every single creation of allah all the animals all the birds 
even the animals even the fish inside the water in the sea on the land even the trees and the mountains every single thing glorifies allah and praise allah tusabbihu lahu samawati as-sab' wal ardu wa man fihin wa in min shay'in illa yusabbihu bihamdi walakin la tafqahuna tasbihahum Allah says all seven heavens and the earth and every single thing in between the heavens and the earth every single thing every single creation of Allah glorifies Allah but you people do not understand the glorification alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu man fi as-samawati wa man fi al-ard wa at-tayru safat have you not seen that the heavens they glorify allah the earth glorifies allah even the birds who are flying in the air they also glorify allah alam tara anna allah yasjudu lahu man fi as-samawat wa man fi al-ard wa ash-shams wa al-qamar wa an-nujum wa al-jibal wa ash-shajar wa ad-dawab wa kathirun min an-nas have you not seen that every single creation of allah prostrates and makes sajda before allah even the sun glorifies allah the moon glorifies allah the mountains glorify allah the trees they also glorify allah the stars they glorify allah every single creation of allah praises allah dul jalal ikram but these two burdens on this land man and jinn they do not appreciate the blessings of allah although they are the ones who enjoy the most the blessings of allah but they do not worship allah the way allah deserves to be worshiped rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says the screaming of this sinner and the disbeliever is heard by every single creation of allah except from these two burdens the human beings they cannot that is why we do not know what takes place inside the grave and this is due to the mercy of allah upon us Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that is reported by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah laula an tadafanu la da'utu Allah an yusmi'akum min adhab al-qabr had i not felt the fear that you people would stop burying your loved ones i would have asked Allah to enable you to hear some of the punishment of the grave but i have the fear that if allah enables you to hear the punishment inside the grave you people would stop burying your loved one if you know what is going to happen to your mother and your father inside the grave if you know what is going to ha happen inside the grave of your brother and your sister and your children and your friends you would never ever bury them This is the mercy of Allah that Allah does not enable you to hear the punishment of the grave. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us of various types of punishments inside the grave. I would like to conclude with just few advices so that we can take something from today's lecture and we all try our best to sort out our problems. and we all come back to allah dul jalal ikram we repent to him we ask his forgiveness and we ask allah dul jalal ikram to protect us from the punishment of the grave rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was passing by two graves and he saw sallam stopped there the companions asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the reason for his stopping there he said I have seen these two individuals being punished inside the grave. One of them is the person who used to walk around in his community with namima. Namima is something that is worse than backbiting. Backbiting is when you when you make the mention of something bad in your brother in Islam. You say someone has done this or that wrong and he that that person does have that fall that shortcoming but you make the mention of his mistakes or his sins in his absence this is backbiting which is not permissible this is major sin but namima is worse than backbiting namima is when you make the mention of someone to someone with the intention 
of causing problem and friction between the two. And if you have this ill intention, this reflects the filthy soul that you have inside your body. This reflects your state of mind that you are so ugly and so bad to the level that you want to cause problem between the relatives. You want to cause problems between two friends. Your intention is to cause friction in the hearts of two Muslim, two believers. He وسلم, said, one of these two individuals who are being punished inside the grave, he used to have this bad habit. And because of this habit, he is being punished inside the grave. As for the other person, the other person is the one who would never protect himself, his body, his clothing from the splashes of the urine. The splashes of the urine or the drop of the urine would fall on his clothing, on his body, and he would not wash them. This is one of the major sins that can cause the person to suffer the punishment inside the grave. Rasulullah said, Istanzihu min al bawl, fa inna amma ta'adab al qabri min. O my ummah, O my followers, save yourself, protect yourself from the drops and, the from, and from the splashes of the urine. Because mostly the punishment of the grave is because of this sin. This is a major sin. That is why my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when you use the toilet, you must be very, very careful. Always bear in mind this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are heedless, if you are careless, and you do not pay any attention to this, then this can cause you suffer from the punishment of the grave. If a drop of the urine falls on your body or on your clothing, you must immediately wash it and clean it. Never neglect it. When you go to the toilet, to use the toilet, make sure you drop some toilet paper inside the toilet before you sit on the seat so that the splashes of that dirty water and the urine does not fall on your body, on your legs. And then you clean yourself carefully and completely, making sure that you have cleaned every single drop of the urine from your body. And apart from this, we need to ask Allah every day that Allah protects us from the punishment of the grave. With this regard, I would like to share with you two ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu and then the talk is over inshallah. The first one is that Rasulullah sallallahu used to read the dua three times in the morning and three times in the evening. And this dua should be part of our morning and evening adhkar. This dua you can find in the book Fortress of the Muslim, Hisn al-Muslim. The dua is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufri wal-faqri wa a'udhu bika min adab al-qabr. La ilaha illa ant. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from disbelief. O oh Allah, protect me from kufr and from disbelief. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from poverty and oh Allah I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave la ilaha illa and there is no worthy of worship except you alone this is a dua every single one of us we should memorize and we should repeat it three times in the morning three times in the evening the second dua is the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu has instructed us to read in our tashahud Whenever you offer any salah, fard or nafl, and when you are to conclude your salah with salam, after you have sent salutation upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you have read Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, read this dua. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ta'awwadu billahi min arba." In your salah, 
seek refuge with Allah or ask Allah for his protection from four things from the punishment of the grave from the punishment of the hellfire, hellfire from the evil trial of a dajjal and from all the trials and tribulations of this life and the death he sallallahu himself used to read this dua allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabr wa min adhab jahannam wa min sharri fitnat al-masih al-dajjal wa min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamat the wording, there are slight difference in wording in various ahadith, but these are the four main things that the Prophet ﷺ has advised us to ask Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from these, from the punishment of these things. And finally, dear, bear in mind, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the dua that is the masnoon dua. This is the sunnah. Rasulullah himself used to read and he instructed his companions to read and he instructed his ummah to read this dua in the tashahud. As for the rest of the duas, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salah, Rabbana atina fi dunya Rabbana zalamna anfusana, Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbayani saghira, or any other dua. All of those dua are permissible to be read in tashahud. But none of these duas we can say that Rasulullah sallallahu read these dua. He sallallahu allowed us to read these dua, any dua in tashahud. But we cannot say that it is sunnah to read all these duas. The sunnah is to read the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adab al-qabr wa a'udhu bika min adab jahannam. So and we all know there is always khair and barakah in following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Believing in Khairul Hadi Hadi Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best way is the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there is more reward in reading the Masnoon Dua in Tashahud. So I would request every one of you, if you do not know this Dua, pick up again this short book of the Dua's Fortress of the Muslim and read, start memorizing. It's not difficult to memorize. It's easy. It might take you a couple of days or week or few weeks. But it doesn't really matter. Make your efforts, memorize this dua and then start reading this dua in every single prayer. Whenever you sit in tashahud before salam, read this dua. I ask Allah Jalal Ikram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us all from the punishment of the grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our graves the gardens of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy and his blessings on all those who have passed away from amongst our relatives, our parents, our siblings, our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn their graves the gardens of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them all from the punishment of the grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to act upon whatever we hear and whatever we say. Innahu sami'un qareebun mujib. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Questions are clear. The answer to the first question, which is, that when we enter into the graveyard and we say assalamu alaikum ahl diya do the people of the graves hear our salam the answer to this question is that yes what do you say yes okay in order to understand this and this should be and this can be even answer to the second question as well when it comes to the matter of the religion and particularly anything that is related to unseen. We believe in whatever Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, they have told us, and we cannot make our own analogy. This is the crucial point. This is the fundamental principle of believing in Allah and having the belief in the faith that whatever we find the evidence for we accept it and anything that we do not find the evidence for we cannot make our own analogy or our own qiyas with regards to the hearing 
of the deceased or the dead ones inside the grave, Allahu A'lam, according to my limited and short knowledge, I do not know any hadith that confirms that the people of the graves do hear. I do not know any. And on top of this, which is also the part of the question, if they can hear the salam, why can they not hear more than the salam? Meaning, when you approach them and you say, how are you doing? What is taking place? What is happening inside the grave? Again, we do not find any evidence from this, from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Secondly, this is also important, to know that when you say, Assalamu alaikum, look at the meaning of this. What does meaning of, what is the meaning of Assalamu alaikum? How do you translate in English? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. What does this mean? Can you really translate it? How do you translate in English? Peace, peace, be, upon peace be upon you. Which is what? A dua. Which is a dua. So when you say Assalamu alaikum, so basically when you say to me Assalamu alaikum, you have made dua for me. While we are alive, we are obliged. You say assalamu alaikum to me, I'm obliged to give you the same dua back. I say wa alaikum as -salam. You made dua for me, you said peace be upon you. I say may Allah shower his peace upon you as well. But when you enter into graveyard, you have made dua for the deceased one. It doesn't really matter whether they hear or don't hear, whether they say, whether they reply back or they don't reply back. Because dua is something that you make to Allah. You don't make dua to the dead one. When I say assalamu alaikum, when we are alive, as I said, this is a religious obligation that if someone gives me dua, I reply back. And this is not only in the matter of salam, other than salam as well. What the Prophet ﷺ has taught us, that if someone says to us, Jazakallahu khaira, may Allah reward you with good. So what do we say? Wa iyak, wa anta fa jazakallahu khaira. May Allah reward you as well. So this is our religious obligation to give, the, make the same dua for the person who is giving us a dua. Likewise, when the person sneezes, and the person says, Assalamu, uh, uh, the person says, Alhamdulillah, and you make dua. I sneeze, you make dua for me. You say what? Yarhamukallah, may Allah shower his mercy. And now it is my obligation as a believer to, to make some dua for you. So I reply back, I say, Yahdikumullah wa yuslihu balakum. So this is salam, assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam. These are all duas. We exchange duas while we are alive. And you cannot expect this exchange of words and statements from the deceased ones. So that is why it doesn't really matter whether they hear or they don't hear, whether they reply or they don't reply. As I said in the first place, we do not find any evidence in the hadith. And secondly, the salam is dua and dua is made to Allah. And you ask Allah that Allah showers his peace and mercy upon them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. This is... Uh, the answer to the first question. The second question with regards to the hadith that I mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ passed by two graves and he saw those two individuals were being punished inside the grave. And then the hadith continues at the, as Brother Abdul Rahman mentioned that Rasulullah ﷺ then brought a twig and he, and, and he split it in two halves and then he left or he 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 sallam, planted those two twigs on the grave and he said an bihima i hope that allah reduces or lessens the punishment of these two people inside the grave because of these two twigs and the wording in the hadith is as long as the, these twigs they remain green and fresh. Okay? People take or try to take the evidence from this hadith. And they say, this is what Rasulullah did. So that we can also do similar things. So we can leave some flowers, some fresh flowers on the grave. Or we can, 
even plant a twig or the even tree or any plant on the grave so that we can also have the hope that Allah lessens the punishment of our deceased. We say no. Again, this is a matter of the religion. You cannot make your own analogy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first and foremost, he said, he informed the companions who were with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, these two people are being punished. That is why he did this act. In order for you to do this, you need to bring a proof that your deceased are going to be punished in the grave. Do you know that they are being punished? Or you even would like to hear that they are being punished? So why would you do this? Secondly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if this was a part of the religion, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have encouraged his companions to repeat this act and to follow his sunnah. Is there any evidence that the companions of Allah, those who observed this, those who reported this hadith, those who reported this incident to us, have they ever acted upon this sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu If you say yes, then bring the evidence. If you say no, then we say yes, this is the way to follow the religion. Whatever Rasulullah has instructed us to do, we are obliged to do. We should do. Whatever the Messenger gives you, you take it. And if the Prophet would have instructed his companions to follow his footsteps and follow his sunnah, the companions would have followed it and we also would follow it. But if the companions, the first generation of Islam, if they did not do this act, we should not do it. That is why it is not permissible to leave anything, any, any tree or any plant or any flower on the grave, believing that it can lessen the punishment of the person inside the grave. Allahu A'lam. So, okay, so the brother has asked the question, when we make dua for our loved ones who have passed away, does Allah and for how long lessen the punishment in the grave? Okay. Yes. Uh, again, the answer to this question is what I mentioned earlier. We know only whatever Rasulullah has informed us. The Prophet ﷺ never informed us for how long the punishment is reduced. And also, none of us know whether Allah has accepted our dua. In the first place, you make dua for your loved ones who have passed away, the deceased one inside the graves. First and foremost, you don't know whether Allah accepted your dua or not. Okay? But if Allah has accepted dua, for how long the punishment is going to be reduced, we do not know. But what we know is that the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to make dua for all the believers who have passed away. Including our parents, our family members, our relatives, our friends, all the people who have passed away and they have died on Iman and Islam, we make dua for them. Our responsibility is to make dua for them. But along with this, I would like to mention another thing that the dua of uh, the living ones, it benefits the deceased, particularly the parents. The way the dua of the children benefit the parents, no other dua can benefit them that way. That is why Rasulullah said when the person dies, he all of his deeds are cut off apart from three deeds. From three deeds that continue and he continues receiving the reward of those good deeds inside his grave. And one of them is waladun salihun yad'ula, a pious child that makes dua for him. So when the son and the daughter make dua for the deceased parents, 
what happens rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the rank of the person in paradise and this person asks allah oh allah why did you raise my rank in paradise although i have left the dunya and i'm not doing any extra good deeds then the reply from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that bi da'wati waladika salih we have raised your rank in paradise due to the dua of your pious child so this is the benefit of the dua of the children for their deceased parents that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy has taught us the best dua that we can make and we should make for our parents rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all the parents who have passed away and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower mercy on them amen oh, okay Okay, so the brother has asked the question that uh, what he has noticed, although it is in Pakistan, but it is relevant uh, wherever you are, that people sometimes make a special effort to go to the graveyard, in particular after Fajr, and to make the dua there. And his question is, is this correct? Okay, visiting the graveyard with the intention of making dua for the deceased is something that is permissible and something that is recommended. In fact, this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our mother Aisha radiyallahu taala anha reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sometime would wake up at night and he would go to Baqi. As we know, the graveyard of Baqi is next to the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the house of the Prophet was. between the masjid and the baqi so he sallam would wake up at night sometime and he would go to the graveyard although we the people of the weak iman we believe that going to the graveyard at night can cause a big problem to us because if you go in the dark into the graveyard then you will be obsessed you will be possessed by the jinn okay but rasulullah sallam used to go at night and he used to go there he used to make dua for the deceased for the deceased muslims so this is something that is recommended secondly there is another purpose of visiting the grave and also it is highly recommended by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith in which he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarat al qubur fazuruha fa innaha tuzahid al dunya wa tudhakkir al akhira i used to forbid you from visiting the graves at the beginning of islam but now i encourage you to visit the graves because visiting the graves detaches your heart from dunya and it reminds you of your hereafter so this is the second purpose of visiting the grave so sometime we should make efforts to go to the cemetery not only at the time of burial but other than burial when you go there in order to remind yourself of your death and of your grave and of your hereafter so this is also recommended as for uh, making extra efforts to visit the graveyards on a special occasions okay believing that uh, making dua for the deceased at that particular occasion is more beneficial this is something that has no evidence from the sunna So people go to graveyard sometime people have the habit to visit the graveyard every friday no significance in the hadith or in the sharia we find for visiting the graveyard on friday likewise visiting as you said the people sometime go to graveyard straight after salatul fajr no significance if it happens happens or if the person has if the person has only the time after fajr it goes to graveyard it is fine but to believe that it is there is any significance of visiting the graveyard at that time there is no evidence likewise people go to graveyard 
uh, on uh, on 10th of Muharram. Again, no significance. And sometime visiting the graveyard on the occasions of happiness can be sin. It can be sin. For example, visiting the graveyard on the day of Eid. The day of Eid is the day of happiness. You should be celebrating this day. As Rasulullah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this day to joy and happy, to be happy. But and at that day, if you go to graveyard and you sit by the grave of your mother and your father and you start crying, it is as if you are not pleased with Allah and you are, you are not appreciating the blessings of Allah, of Islam. So that is why the scholars have said making extra efforts to visit the graveyard on the day of Eid and say I'm not going to celebrate Eid because my mother has passed away just few days before Eid or oh, this is the very first Eid after my mother has left this dunya so I'm not going to celebrate what kind of happiness I can have so I'm going to spend my day or couple of hours in the grave next to my mother's grave this is something that is not permissible. Because you are doing something completely contrary to the religion of Allah. Can you expand on that with respect to women visiting graveyards? The was asked, you know, uh, what is the ruling for women visiting the graveyard? The, for women, it is permissible to visit the graveyards, but they are uh, forbidden from frequently visiting the graveyards and particularly when the intention is to go there and they start wailing and weeping and crying and screaming. If this is what they do, then it is not permissible for them. Rather, this is completely something that it will become something that is completely prohibited and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has cursed such women who go there and frequently they visit the graves and they start screaming and shouting and weeping and crying, then Rasulullah has cursed such women. But if sometime again with these two purposes, either the woman goes to the graveyard for the purpose of making dua for their loved ones or in order to remind themselves of their next life, then for these two purposes it is permissible for them. Yeah.